Hello and welcome to a multi-crew video. Yes, you heard that right. Two different players, two different parts of the world meeting together as virtual pilots to fly the same plane. If he presses a button, I see it move on my end. If I press a button, he sees it move on his end. What more is there? Well, there's a whole bunch. Say hello, Tally. Hey, how you doing? Hello, how you doing? So Tally has very kindly agreed to show us around this aircraft. He's also gone and prepared a flight plan for us. And you may think we're sat together in the same room. We're not. We're thousands of miles apart. And for the UK, Tally is from somewhere deep inside the USA. And we're getting ready to walk towards our aircraft. So, Tally, after you. So, first, you were usually uh, going... Actually, you would go in this room for all your flight plan. And then I usually do that beforehand. And then you come over here. And then you'll do the ground handling request so if you press the little desk here it'll pop up like a little uh paper to fill out so you'll put in your tell number outside our tell number today is november 4 alpha kilo oscar uh yeah i see yeah. that yep oh and it already fills out for you perfect okay yeah we've and got an estimated departure time of 1940 oh no 1952 oh no it is 1945 zulu is that what you set yeah, uh, actually, that might be wrong. Did you ask for two crew and eight passengers? Yep, so on the plan, it's always going to be, two, well, not always, but I always put two crew and then the passengers from the the uh, Simbrief plan. Okay, fantastic. We'll take a look at the uh, Simbrief plan once we get out to the aircraft. Yep. But Tally's let us know that if, if you uh, are doing this single crew or indeed you're the captain as tally is today you would actually go into this staff room here and enter the flight planning room and i i have done this but we'll not do it now if you click on the desk here with the computer it'll actually open up your sim brief window so you can plan the uh, route just like you would the rest of the time yep all right so let's go ahead and walk to there oh my <laughs> this is so weird seeing you as minecraft man Hey, at least like there we have a oh there you go all right so i'm not sure how uh realistic you want to be here so we'll 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 go as realistic as you're comfortable with and i'm aware it takes quite a little time to get the thing going but that's because there's a lot to it right? Gotcha. right so first we'll go ahead and see what's in the cockpit uh it's always weird to open there you go so Tally was actually pressing these uh, buttons in there. They actually depress and he's used his, his controls to do it. This is my first time playing multiplayer, I should say, that multi-crew. Or you know what? I have a good idea. How about I become the right seater and you're the left seater for today? And I'll uh, just guide you. You yeah, that sounds good. You could right. be the uh, you could be the instructor from the right seat. The other pilot requested to swap seats. Would you like? Oh, I didn't realize. Okay, so I'm now left seater. Yep, that's a re another really cool feature. So once you come in here, uh, I believe the right seat would prepare the airplane, whilst the left seater uh, does a walk around. So you know, just walk around. Or I don't know if I got that backwards, backwards, but usually I think the left seater will walk around, take off the. Uh, the covers, take off the pins, just do a walk around, make sure everything is uh, nice, no nicks, knacks, nothing like that on the airplane. Okay, well I think what we'll do is we'll, I'll take out the pins and then I'll see you because I have gotten that far. So we've got uh, all of these. I do like that they blow in the wind and I've noticed when I did this single player uh, once or twice, the winds were more, and these red tabs were really blowing in the wind, so that's a nice little touch. So let's get rid of that one. And to get rid of these, you just look at them and, and click the covers for the pitot tubes and angle of attack and whatnot. Sounds like Tally's getting the APU whirling. We've got this one here. And so that's the outside done. Then there's this nose wheel here, which... I'm going to take the pin off the wheel first and then off the covers. There we go. 
And now if we open this little cover here, there's a secret switch. Providing Tally's put hydraulic power on, we should be able to shut the door. Have you put three... 3A on your blood or 3A. Okay. And it can power really well. Perfect. Still waiting for the. Uh, it should be. Yeah, it's on now. It's on now. Okay. okay. There we go. So you see there that switch and the hydraulics only work if the hydraulics is on. So that's cool. So I'm going to close the cover now, secure the tabs, and with it, the only thing that's left are the chocks, but we can ask the ground crew uh, to do that. So I'm going to try and uh, see. Oh, I seem to be stuck under the aircraft somehow. I uh, can't seem to get away from the aircraft, even though I'm ducking. Oh. If you're stuck, you just uh, shift nine. Shift nine? Yep. Good little trick. That's the first time that's happened. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to pull up something here. A checklist. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Do you know getting these Minecraft heads is uh is is funny. I'm gonna fold the heads up display away. Alright. Oh yeah, I'll just load the uh, flight plan up my side. Charts back. Charts, there we go. So this is what Tally's set up for us. Battery, battery, if you start, if you gen on DC, now blades. Okay. Oh, oh yeah. So yeah, you're done with the uh, walk around. Yeah, yeah. Walk around's done. We're all, we're all good. Okay. So, do you know how to fiddle with the uh, CPU? I do. Alright, so if you want, you can go ahead and get our flight plan in there, and okay, get our flight plan in there, and then I'm going to show you something that else you can do with that. Alright, so first thing I note here, and again, this is to the benefit of the video, because I've, you know, been reading a lot. There's a lot of documentation that comes with this aircraft. It's a little different to the Airbus and the Boeing. Here it says check uh, database dates, so if you come over to the index page you may think oh i've got navigraph it's up to date you've got to come to the index page and then i believe it's uh status and then here you've got your active database you see that's locked in december 2021 and the, the secondary database which is now uh, is the one lower down actually looks like that expires later tonight so we're using it on uh, the last last time we'll be using it for this flight so to activate that if you click on it and then move it up to the top, wait two or three seconds. That's now got the latest database active. And that's a weird thing and you have to do it every single flight. But just thought I'd point that out because it's it got me. Okay, so flight plan and you want me to start filling this in? Yep. Okay, cool. So, oh, yeah. Oop, I don't know that. So, yeah, uh, if you put in the flight plan and then press in. I don't know if it's going to automatically automatically do it. Uh, so where it loads the flight plan because you're doing it. But yeah, I don't think it will be automatic. So what I'll do, but it's, but I'll load it because it's not going to be, it's probably not that long, is it? Yeah. Okay. The fuel truck came, but we really, we already have more than enough fuel. So I'm going to go ahead and send it away. Or okay. I gotta start filling in the flight plan, so we'll go kilo. Yeah, if you need me anything, just shout. I normally mumble to myself when I'm doing it, but I realise that's gonna be distracting. <laughs> so I'll 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 try shut up. Pretty see. is on the second page. KGSO. Okay, 
and actually what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna go ahead and call for the or actually i don't know if it's gonna let's see i'm gonna go for the passengers because they usually take very very long to get to the airplane okay so it's, it's great to call beforehand and then by the time they get here we'll be ready for engine start so okay Yeah, so what I've noticed is there's a little phone behind the captain's chair, that thing that says Honeywell, and you it literally shows this little iPhone on the screen and you can call uh, the FBO and ask for things like fuel truck, de-icing, uh, uh, power, and yes, the passengers. I think that might be the satellite phone. I'm not entirely sure because ah. there's another phone right here. I don't know if you can see me looking at it. Uh... Are you in the Ooh, cockpit? Right. Yeah, uh, if you go in the captain's seat, look oh, to yeah. the left. Oh, yeah. I see it. Oh, so there's, there's two phones. Yeah, so I believe the Honeywell, I think that's a satellite phone. Okay, well, that's the one I'd been using when I did it, so I guess they must both ring the FBO. Oh, uh, do you know about the headphones? Um, I clicked them, and it it's quieter noises, yeah, so that is supposed to represent uh, represent noise cancelling. Yeah. So, that's, I found that another really cool feature. It's just like the tiny things in this airplane that make it a really great airplane. Yeah. I'll tell you what, I'll uh, I'll click that because, um, you know, we can still each other find. Well, yeah, it is. It is cool. The noise cancelling, you're right. Okay, so I'm going to try finish this. So, I've got the alternate in. So, it's going to be first to eat woo. Then CNTLR. How would you pronounce that? CNTLR, controller, or? Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. Whenever I phone, that's on, they say controller. So. Controller, okay. And then we've got, I guess, the uh, John Z4 arrival. Yep. So, like, sec. <laughs> I think I know all like the SIDs and stars out of Atlanta and Charlotte. Like I fly out of there so much in this sun. Atlanta, I'm trying to think. I probably have been. I've certainly not been to the other one, but certainly Atlanta, the main airfield. I don't know, a couple of times. Because I go, I don't really go the same place. I, you know, I'm always going somewhere else. Yeah, I got you. Right, so runway. Hang on, uh, K, let me just see, did I fill this in right? K, C, L, T. Yep, that's right. And I click, depart, arrive, and I'm not seeing runway 36 as an option. I'm only seeing uh, 8, 14, 26, and 32. Uh, it's actually 2, 6. Okay, so on the plan, I've actually got for our arrival here, 3, 6, 3, 6, right. Yeah, it's 36 right. Because this is the, uh, yeah, this is the KFTY departure. Sorry, I'm talking about our destination. Oh, sorry, I get it. I'm viewing the departures. My bad, my bad. Yeah, you can. I realize now you've got to press back to go through. Okay, so there we go. Runway 26 for departure. There is no SID. And then if we click this one, then go to arrival. There we go. Thank you. Right, Jonesy four three six right John Z four uh transition controller do you know if uh, the if we go through Heckham or if it's vectors between Jonesy and the ILS okay, say again. when we come through Jonesy for arrival to get to the ILS runway 36 right. Is it vectors or do we go through Heckham? Oh, it's going to be vectors. So, uh, I... Do you actually I see, can... do you actually see exactly what I've got on the screen? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. So does that look good? Yeah, that looks good. Uh, I'll guide us through it. I fly out it. I fly into short a lot, so. Should I exec that then? Yep. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm just trying to run some checklists. Okay, so 
Well, once you get that flight plan loaded, I'm gonna try to get the passengers here, and once you get the flight plan loaded, everything like that, and the IRS aligns, we should be ready for engine start. Okay. I actually have the menu here for the phone call on my screen, even though I didn't initiate it. Okay, so, uh, did it say the passengers are ready? I don't know, I've got the uh, pump fuel dialogue on my oh. screen. Oh yeah, so with that, uh, yeah, just tell him he can go away. Uh, okay. We have more than enough fuel for have this a nice day. Oh, I've got a phone call now from the FBO. <laughs> I, th I think this might be where there's a slight disconnect, so I'm just going to answer it. Captain, yep. it's Jenny from Hot Start Flight Support. Hiya, Jenny. Your passengers have arrived. Oh, the passengers oh, have, have arrived. Yeah, bring them to the plane, please, Understood. Jenny. They'll be there in a couple of minutes. Thank you. Anything else? No, Jen, you can go. Always a pleasure. Take care. You too. Bye. Right, that's Jenny dealt with. She's going to bring the passengers out. Perfect. Okay. We will. So shall I continue with this box of tricks then? So legs. Uh, yeah. Okay, seems like we've got we got the IRS now. Yeah. So the legs. Um, I forget now which one it is. It's I think it's this one here where I can view the plan. Yeah. There we go. I think it's the. Oh no, that's. This is all new to me, you see, the, the controls to view the plan and everything. I'm used to it being on the front dash. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. So you got a, uh, you have a disco there. Yeah, so we've, let's have a look. So we're going to controller and then there's a disco as it gets back to controller. So I think what I'm going to do is, I tried this before, up selecting controller onto controller. Actually, that's yep. done it. That's fine. Perfect. Next. And next. I just, how do I, which, which is the button? It's a shame I can't actually see where your finger's pointing or your mouse as it were, because I would like to see how do I. Yeah, there's like a laser pointer. I can try, uh, let's see. I know there's a laser pointer, but I'm trying to figure out what it's Because what I want to do is, rather than map view, I want to go on to what you would call plan view or plan mode in Boeing or Airbus. Oh, uh, mm, where's that? I know we... Okay, that's just the zoom in and out. It's right... Oh, yeah, forgot. It's it's not like a it's a lower menu, correct? Yep, perfect. There you go. So what you oh, do is it. yeah. So if you come, uh, I would, actually let me try to find the laser pointer. I know there's a laser pointer in this area. Okay. Uh, so what did you what did you press to make that happen? Lower menu. Yep. So you press the lower menu, and then it'll pop up like a menu. So you can actually press it. And then you scroll the wheel. Okay, so I've got P, yeah. POS, Plan, and TCAS. Okay. Yep. Uh, okay, perfect. And, yep. That's just how you do it. Okay, thank it's, you. It's a, yeah, it's a little uh, different than there was some going where you, you just today? Oh, passengers here. Oh, you heard them too? That's cool. So that's well, synced up. We're all set back there, so we can get going anytime. Okay, great. All right. There's another discontinuity, but that's okay because that's the vectors from Chelly to Sick Do. We were expecting that. Yep. And then, and... and then that takes us down to the ILS unless we have to go missed. So I think the legs page is, is okay if you think. Oh, uh, yep. Everything's fine. Uh, I trust you. Now. Before we go, I'm going to close the door. Do you know how to get the uh, V-Speeds? Um, I will... I'll tell you what. I'm just going to... what I'll watch you do the door just for the purposes of the video because this is another cool thing that's unique to this aircraft. You've got to shut the door. So am I out your way? So you've got to pull the handrail up. That's what Tally is doing. Sometimes it can be a pain, but it wasn't this time. Oh. 
Yeah, you've yeah. got to pull it all the way and then push that red lever down. And then he's opened that little catch to pull that out there. So, yeah, that's just a nice touch is that. And then there's like a little curtain, actually, if you see this. Hang on. I never saw the curtain. Where did you pull that out? So it's like a little... Uh, oh, at the very top. Oh, I never realized you could click that. I see that. That's a nice touch. And then there's also another one right here. It's not a curtain, but it's a little, uh... Yeah, we can... Oh, like a little door? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Okay. Never realized that. Nice touch. Okay. I couldn't find any wipers. Is that right? There are no wipers on this. Yeah, there are no wipers on this aircraft. That's the one of the big downsides because whenever it's really pouring raining... And also, this thing doesn't have auto land, by the way. Wow. Oh. It'll... Yeah, it, it has eyeless uh, capabilities, but it, it won't flare. Like, you can, technically, it, it, it can auto land, but it just won't flare. Okay. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, it, it can auto land. It's just, it just might be a little hard. Just a bit rough, yeah. Yeah. Right, okay, so let's pull the tablet back out. And home page. Oh, yeah, we got it there. So, I'm going to go ahead. Let's go and get ready for engine start. Okay, Doors. I'm still... I'm still trying to get the speeds in. Uh, I just need to... Right, leg. Right, winds, we're just going to ignore that for this occasion. So just bear with us while I get these speeds. So I'm going to get behind myself. Uh, so. Performance page. Is that right? Yep, and perf menu. Performance page in the perf menu. So I'm going to try and fill some of this in. Oh, yeah, we need the weights and everything. So perf in it. I just. Yeah, I think uh, if we don't get these weights in, it's not going to uh, be right, is it? So the thing about this is I sometimes do it. I sometimes don't. When I don't do it, it doesn't really hurt the aircraft. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll just get the basics in. So how many passengers? Did we say 10? Uh, I believe it was eight. Yep, you got eight. It was eight. Okay. Yep. Okay, so we'll get eight passengers in. Uh, Cargo-wise, I don't think we had any. Fuel, it's reading 4,340. Do you get the same? Now 4,330. Yep. Okay, let's go with 4,330. Uh, cruise height, can you remember what that was? It is... Uh, 330. 330. That's in. Okay. Next page. Winds. I'll tell you what, we'll leave the winds. Uh, ice deviation, I'm just having... I guess we can leave that as well. Yeah. Because I... it'll just take time. So... For the takeoff page, we're using runway 26. Also, let me change something because we don't use uh, QNH in America. Of course, you so use Altimeter. <laughs> yep. So, uh, actually, if you want to uh, pull up your PFD, so just uh, click your PFD. All right. I'm go ahead and press menu. And then. Go ahead and scroll down. I'll go ahead and scroll down, press config, and then it's really easy just to change this to altimeter. And also... What ah, I so that changes it on the display as well. That's useful. I was wondering how to do that, because sometimes I fly in America, and they're, of course, always saying altimeter 299, whatever. And I was there trying to convert it on the standby instrument. And then also you have, like, little... Okay, I'm going to show you on the MFD. God, there's so many options on this. It's unbelievable. Yeah. So if you look on your MFD, I'm about to turn some of these on, which I like to turn on. So I'll put speed restrictions out to... They're very useful. So, so if you look on your MFD, I put on geopolitical, social, rivers, states, all that, and then the altitude and speed restrictions. That's helpful. Uh, yeah. Okay. Right, I got those. I saw you do those changes, and that's good to know. You're going to have to move your head out of the way. <laughs> Never oh, thought I'd God. say that on uh, on X-Plane. Shift your head out of the way. Uh, right, outside air temp, we've got... 
Where is it? So I'm trying to find the outside air temperature. Is it showing up anywhere? Oh, I see it on my dash left hand side. 15 degrees I've got. Oh, uh, actually, with Nikola, my Navigraph. So there's 15. Yeah, Navigraph, good point for the winds. I just want to tune the radio in, though. Uh, so we'll give that a go. I'll get the ATIS through that. I'd probably use the flight plan for the video. But we'll use ATIS if it works. So Kilo, Fox, Tango, Yankee. Do you actually see what I'm doing on the tablet as well or not? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> I don't think so. Kilo, Fox, Tango, Yankee. Airport page, so 29. So ATIS is 120175. So I'll tell you what, you can use the radios, can't you? You can dial them in. Yep, so if you go to... Yeah I, want, yeah, I want you to dial it in. Dial it in, I want to see if it works through the multiplayer thing. So dial me in one two zero one seven five. It does. Okay, so that's on. So if I turn, hey, I can hear it. Information uniform nineteen twenty Zulu special. Wind light and variable. Visibility three miles. Rain. Sky conditions overcast at two hundred fifty. Overcast at three thousand four hundred. Overcast at twenty one thousand five hundred. Temperature fourteen. Dew point thirteen. Altimeter two niner niner two. Arriving runway zero eight. Departing runway zero eight. Advise on initial contact. You have information uniform. Okay, so that works fine. Fulton County. And I've got the weather. We'll ignore the runway because winds are light and variable, so it doesn't really matter. And so I've got the takeoff ref in. So do I press next page here as well on the takeoff? Because we've got Sorry, paid. Uh, this, uh, your mic was lagging me a little bit. Okay, so I was doing the takeoff stuff and we're on page one of four. Do I scroll through to the next pages? Oh, so you can say that again? Your mic was lagging. I think that was fine. Is the mic still lagging? Oh, no, I hear you perfectly fine now. Okay, so I'm on the takeoff ref page one of four. Do I scroll through those? Yep, so you just go to the next page and then send the view speeds. Okay. Oh yeah, CG. I read on the CG people were putting 25 or 26 percent. Is that what you do? Uh, so I usually use CG blank. It, it doesn't really hurt the aircraft. Uh, okay. It's just to give us a trim speed. So I'll tell you what, I'll just put, if you don't normally fill it in, I'll just put in 25. Just to give us that trim number, 5.4. Okay, so the V speeds, well, you'll see them, don't you? You'll see them. Yep. Okay. They're gonna pop up on. Uh, yeah. Perfect. So, so I'll press send. Do we leave engine bleed off? Yes, we will. Yep. Okay. So I'll send that. And that says complete. Alright. So, yep. Yeah, uh, everything. Actually, let me check myself. Because I feel like I'm always forgetting something on this page. Do you set. And again, I. I don't know if this is the way or not, but do you set V2, which in this case is 133 knots, do you set that on your speed dial for the autopilot? Uh, so usually, no. Uh, whenever I fly on that sim, usually I would just go ahead and default the speed to like 200. Okay. Because, actually, wait, let me pull up something. So you would set the speed more like whatever the restriction is on VATSIM, not the V2 speed for the aircraft? Yep. Okay. Wait one second. So speed. I'll actually load our departure procedure up because I've not looked at it. 
Oh, we didn't have a departure one, did we? There isn't one. No, yeah, there's no, uh... There are no SIDs out of here. Okay. I'm gonna turn off this, because that's getting a little annoying. Yeah, okay. I, I turned mine off. Alright, so now, let's go ahead and get ready for engine start. Let's get out of here. We've been here for a minute. Sure. So, have we done everything we need to do up until now? Is that it done now? Uh, I now believe so. Sometimes I forget things, but, uh, I'm just triple checking here. We should be good. Okay, so the only other thing I'm thinking is we're using runway 26, is that right? That is correct. Okay, so the heading for 26 is 265. So I'm going to put that in on the heading dial. Is that okay, 265? Okay, so I'll dial or in. Yeah, no, we can text out to 26, it's not that far. So there we go, 265 is set. And I'm just going to have the approach page for 26 in case it all goes wrong. Alright, and if you want we can go ahead and start on the engine start checklist. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, so... Doors are closed. Parking brake is check set beacon. We'll go and turn that on. Fuel boost pumps. We'll go and turn that on. Ignition to arm. And then if you want to do the honors, engine to start. Okay, engine to start. Just uh, one sec. So there's the start of valve. I'm still yeah ignition A. So engine two, your side coming up. Three, two, one. Start valve open. All right. And, and two comments. Twenty percent. You can go ahead and give it some. Uh, yep. All right. Fuel on. So you're saying twenty percent fuel on. Itt fuel flow, and N two coming up. Yep. I'll tell you what, it's very quiet with those headphones. I'm going to take mine off again. There we go. I can't actually hear the engines with those headphones on. Yeah. Oh, once we take off, you're going to hear them, though, even if you have the headphones on. So. Okay. Okay, looks like we've... Yeah. Looks like we've got a good start on two anyway. And... Yep, and then we can go ahead and go engine one to start. Okay, engine one. Starter coming up. Valve is on. Oh, it's funny. We have a uh, American registration with a Canadian flag on our tail. <laughs> All right. Uh, fuel going in. All right. How did you change the screen mode, uh, the second screen that we were looking at? So the... The screen on the right as I'm viewing it from my side. So what you would do is uh, down here on the pedestal, you would just press whichever one you're looking at. So say the lower menu, you press the lower menu. Lower menu, but th did that not do the one on the left? Oh, I see. Okay, I get it. I get it. That's... Okay, great. And then you change all that right there. You could really do with a, um, uh, the views is quite difficult to do this. Yep, so that's why usually when I, uh, so I, I'm in the hot start beta thingy. Yeah. Intel beta challenger. So on the beta of the CL650, there is, if you hover your mouse over the, uh, the PFD or the MFD, the panel for that, um, uh, the panel for that screen will pop up. It's it's complicated to explain, but no, but that sounds useful. I've no if yeah. you pre if you if you press the screw on the controls, it makes the panel pop up. So I guess it does that automatically. Is that right? Yep. So uh, I can actually show you on a screen share later on the flight when we uh, when we're done with the flight. But yeah. All right. Okay. Well, we've got I've got the I've got the page that I want on for departure anyway. Both engines are up and running, so let's go from there. 
Uh, okay, after start checklist, you want to go ahead and turn on Gen 1 and Gen 2. Gen 1 and 2 are on. And we can go ahead and disarm the ignition. Ignition is off. Packs can come on, or they're already on. Okay. Packs are on. 14th stage, that's on my side. You can go ahead and open them. Open both sides. Perfect. Uh, we don't mess with the anti gas right now. Flight controls check. So, do you know how to do the flight control? Uh, sorry, flight controls check. So, I think you press the FLT button down here. Yep. And okay, and so there. We, so, I've done that. I'll let you explain yep. the rest. And then, yep. So you just. This is actually tally moving the. I just want to say for the video, it looks like I'm moving the stick back and forth. I'm not. This is what tally is doing. Yep, so you just make sure. Oh, that's my brother. <laughs> yeah, just make sure all the uh, controls are free. Make sure it's moving. Okay, so they look good for you, so I'm going to do the same. They all seem to be free and correct. And then, nope, another thing is that with any other shared cockpit software, you usually cannot do like. Uh, you have to like request to handle the aircraft so one person can only control it at one time but with this airplane we can yeah because the only other time i've done dual cockpit is dcs and that's how it is in dcs you've got a request yeah and there's actually another shared cockpit like where you can do like a shared cockpit like in the a220 any other aircraft but it's really buggy and uh yeah okay do I press config again then to get it off the screen or do we leave it there? Yeah, uh, you can press escape. Oh, press escape. Okay, that's it. I'm pressing this escape. Uh, or no, sorry, flight. FLT button again, sorry. Okay, okay, got it. Alright, so let's continue with the checklist. Fourth and stage tile. Okay, flight controls, that's weird. Ground spoilers, they checked. Stowed auto. Auto. Let's see, fuel balance. Uh, sorry, fuel balance. Uh, it's 2.1 and 2. Point, well, 1 if we round it off. It's within 90 pounds. Alright, so we're good there. Trims. Uh, 5.0. I've got 5.4 for takeoff, so I'll just move it to 5.4. There we go. We've set trim 5.4. Uh, where was that? No steer. I always forget this. I'm going to go ahead and arm that. Nose wheel steering is armed. Uh, we'll go... We don't mess with the NTS right now. 14 stage. I saw valve. Okay, that's that's cool. ATS and one CO, so do you not uh, just press the little button on the side of the throttle throttles. The ATS one. Okay. Uh no. Uh, on the side of the throttles, there's like a little button. You press that. Yeah. Okay. So that's the. Yep. So, what this does is it just it uh, turns on like the flight directors without you don't have to press the uh, FD button. It will also. Um, Oh, I'm having a brain for it. It's like, is it, is it basically like getting the plane and the autopilot ready for takeoff mode? Is that what it's doing? Basically, yes. Okay, cool. And there's also, well, I'll say that in there. And then ATC TCAS, uh, we don't really have to do that since we're flying offline. Uh, and then we're about ready for takeoff here. What about these? Yeah, I've still got some yellow cautions for windshield heat. Do we not do that until we're taking off? Uh, yeah. So usually, uh, we'll do that on the taxi out to the runway. Okay. With, uh, some other things as well. So let me put my checklist. All right. So it's for the taxi checklist, so let's go ahead and turn the taxi lights on. Uh, taxi lights are on. Uh, flaps. I'll go ahead and put another twenty on my side. Flaps 20, your side. I tell you what, you you, you taxi it, because this will be the first time, you know, for me seeing anybody else drive the plane that I'm in, so to speak. I got you. All right. 
Altimeters. Uh, 2992. And radar, I'll go ahead and tell what we're climbing to, my uh, my altimeter in terms of autopilot is still blanked out. Give me one second. Uh, I'm trying to find this. Okay. You said we're flying to. Uh, let me pull that up. Usually, when I fly to FTY, they give me like. On that send, they give me uh, like 3,000 or 8,000 flight runway. Like, yeah, I think something like that. I'll tell you so what, we'll, we'll, should we go for 8,000 then? Yeah, we'll go 8,000. Okay. Usually, flying out of FTY, we'll get 8,000, but then we'll get like a, a get turn vectors uh, over to controller, or yeah, controller. Okay, cool. All right. So, let me get this ready. I can tell you're used to this plane because all my questions must sound like they're coming from someone that's used to Airbus and Boeing because I'm sort of trying to follow a an Airbusy Boeing checklist in my mind. <laughs> That's a... Yeah. And I can it, tell it's it different. Get... Yeah, it took me a while to get used to this airplane, but like I absolutely absolutely love this airplane. It's brilliant. I can see why it costs more than I think it's the most expensive one I own. Yep. It was a uh, hundred and fifteen when I bought it. So. That's right. That's what it was for me. Okay. Also if you wanna pull up the checklist on your side I can I can send it. Let's see what well, won't work. Okay, that doesn't work. Never mind. Uh, okay, yeah, I see you've sent it on here, so I will. Where are we here? Actually, you know what? There, there's this really cool thing where I can. Oh no, it's not gonna work on multiplayer. So usually, there's a built-in checklist on the uh, right MFD. I've uh, seen that. Can... I've seen that when I've asked the uh, AI basically to be first officer. Yeah, I, uh, I for some reason I can't get it working in uh, shirt cockpit. I'm not sure why. Ah. Well, maybe because you're the first officer. I, I'm, I'm just guessing now. That might be why. Yeah. Okay, documentation. Right, okay. charts. I'm just gonna put it in as a as a chart. Yeah. Uh... Or oh, aircrafts. Oh, we forgot to get the chocks out. Well, can't we ask the ground crew to do it? Yeah, but I just asked them. All right, one sec. I'm just going to... Oh, the sound did go funny there. Uh, one sec. Um... I think now I'm I'm just trying I'm just trying to get my checklist onto the tablet here, so I'm just gonna see if it works. Aircraft uh, scrolling down X Aviation 650. Right, I've got the checklists on here. Okay, perfect. So checklists. Is it the normal one or the principal one I want? Uh, it, both of them are the same. I think the printable one looks better on a computer. Okay, let's put the printable one. Oh yeah, that looks that that's better. That's better. Okay, so I'm going to let's me hand signal the guy to say. Oh, he says my handle signal say chocks in. Oh, you've asked him to pull them out. Great. Okay, so I believe we're done with the check taxi checklist. I think so. Do you keep making my tablet disappear? Uh, I don't think so. All oh, right, okay. Because every time I, every time I turn around, it's disappeared again. Must be so weird. Okay, I'm, I'm just not gonna mess with my tablet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Page three. Start checklist. I'm just getting onto the same page. Oh, it goes straight from taxi checklist. There we go. So we've done that, ish. Flaps twenty altimeter set weather radar. Yep, I got that on. Ah. Uh, and the takeoff briefing. So we are going to. Yep. So we're gonna just fly runway heading, I guess, up to our uh, safe. 2,500 and then 
make a right turn and try to go direct to the controller. Okay, sounds good. And then we'll go ahead and go up to Bruce. Okay, I'm ready when you are. I'm gonna go ahead and release the uh, tool bricks and let's get out of here. Okay. And the good thing about uh, the Challenger is that it can taxi on idle. I noticed it was eager to roll off. Okay, am I doing something? Let's see. Oh no, okay, I just had two bricks, okay. And we are going to. Two sticks. So we're gonna make a quick left and then a quick right. Yeah, that'll work. It's not letting me. Oh, we're gonna back taxi a little bit here. Oh, we don't have that armed. Let's just. So it seems to be a little bit of a of a steering issue. Yeah, it's not. Oh. Oh. <laughs> bit of aggressive on the brakes. Actually, do you want to try to uh, steer it? I'm not sure why. Yeah, sure. Okay, so are we are we good to go? Uh, yeah, but just released on the tow bricks. Okay. Okay, there. Oh, but it goes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure there. I'm not sure why I did that. Make a right. Make a right. Uh, if you can't. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, doing a right. Why oh, she's eager to set off. I, I'm almost don't think we need to accelerate really. Once it just seems to roll. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's like this, the engines are really, like, it's it's like a 757, I believe. The engines are really overpowered. Okay, uh, let's have a little look. Okay, so here we are. So we'll continue on what, Golf, and then right on India, and then we're there, right? Yep. Okay. All the way up to 2-6. But yeah, actually, I, uh... I actually go to a flight school here at FTY. So. Oh, cool. So you're, le you're learning to fly in real life now? Yep. Uh, I'm actually about to start flying uh, soon. But I've done, like, Discovery and all that stuff already. Oh, cool. Cool. I, I did my stuff like that when I was in the cadets. You know, I was in the air cadets over here, so. Uh. I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have been able to, to have, have afforded it otherwise. It, and it was yeah. a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, I would have uh, started earlier if it weren't for the cost, because it is it's still, like, it's really costly to fly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't remember what it is here now. Probably about £100 to, to just have an experience flight for an hour, I'm guessing. Yeah, the, uh, we actually, there's like a lot of, you can do a free discovery flight in a lot of uh, schools here uh, in America, or in uh, Georgia at least, where I live. Actually, let's do the before takeoff. I'm going to do it since you're driving. Oh, okay. So passenger signs on. This is so cool, man. Somebody there. Just able to do the other things and read off the check. And the reading off checklist sounds simple, but it's so helpful as well. Yeah. That's... Yeah, oh, wait, actually, let me do this last one. Cast, take off from figure. Okay, perfect. Landing. Yeah, we can go ahead and turn those on. Pulse. Yep. We're almost at the wrong way. All right, we're good for the before takeoff. Well, yeah, with the Challenger, I just love having a uh, co-pilot. Just one can be driving, one can run checklists. And it's really fun. And especially in Vatsim, where it can get, like, uh, a little busy in the cockpit. Yeah, that's for sure. Okay. So, is this... is? Uh... 
I can want... turn right here uh, if you want to. We don't need, uh, we really don't need full length. No, no. I don't think so. So, are we, are we good to enter the runway? Uh, yep, we're good. Landing lights on, recogs on. Uh, flaps 20, reverse thrusters set, just in case of a, uh... Okay. Check the takeoff. Con Continuous ignition is on. Yep, it's on. TCAS Tara. I'll actually put the... Yep, there you go. And what does this mean? Uh, so, uh, I guess you say we don't need anti-ice, but this SUP ground wing anti-ice panel, what does that mean? So, actually, turn on the... Yeah. So, yeah, uh, that... Basically, I usually don't mess with that, but that's usually when you're in a very cold area like Denver. Uh, I was doing a flight from uh, the Prince of Colorado Springs. It was really icy up there. That's when you're going to have to actually run that... Uh, that checklist with the ah, okay so it's a, so it's basically a separate checklist if you need the anti ice again yeah okay all right cast config I heard you say that landing pulse lights uh, they're all on so I guess we're ready then yep we're ready to go so shall I wind them up uh yep saw you okay. Oh, I got Right, there we go. Oh, we can see. Yeah, here's the log. 80 knots. Right, it's a bit gusty. Yeah, V1 and rotate. Rotate, come on. Whoa. Oh. Good shot here. Here. Yeah. Europe. If you wanna, uh, or not yet, you're good. Let me know when you want AP. Say again? Let me know when, uh, when you want the autopilot. Alright, okay. Yeah, you, you can activate the autopilot now. Gotcha. Alright. If he's taking over. I actually forgot to do heading. So there you go. We're flying runway heading. 265? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I set, I set... Well, I set whatever the runway heading was, I think. Yep. Uh... We'll do the after start landing gears up. Flaps will go zero. Those reverse series, you wanna go ahead and turn that off? That's on your side. Uh, turn what off, sorry? Uh, the reverse dusters. Ah, yeah, okay, so... That's these guys. I'll go ahead and turn continuous ignition off. Pack transition, I'll do that. Okay, so pack transition, that's something that's unique to this aircraft. So am I right in thinking you take off with the APU on? On, yep. Ah. So, yeah. You take off with the APU on. Uh, I'm not, I'm actually not entirely sure why they do that. Because there does seem that. to be, there does seem to be plenty of spare power for takeoff, I have to say. So it's... Yeah. It is a mystery, but yeah, you take off with the APU on, and the APU provides lead air to the packs. Is that right for takeoff? Yep. Okay. And actually, wait, let's go ahead and make a right turn. Yeah. So I'll just turn us to three. Usually I get like 360 on Batson, and then they'll give me direct to controller. So, yep, and we're breaking all the clouds. Perfect. And also, uh, if you look on my CDU, if whenever you tra uh, transition the packs, you have to uh, set the thrust limit. So, right now we're on climb, I put it to climb. Okay. Yeah, so that's different as well, because in most aircraft, that's fully automatic. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a lot of things. The Challenger, it, it does a lot of things automatically and some things it doesn't. So, like, you know how you have to tune, like, an ILS frequency and set the course? Yeah. So, in this airplane, you can do it manually, but f for me, what I found out that it, it sometimes just, well, most of the time, if not all the time, it just does it manual or uh, automatically. It'll say in the CDU that... Um, 
the lock will be tuned. So it'll tune the ILS frequency in the course, which is another really cool feature. Yeah, I'm it's not a, sure. If it's is that like there. Airbus then? So if you put your own course, it will be what you want, but if you leave it, it will be automatic. Yep. Okay. And let's actually, let's, if you want to go uh, direct to, to controller in the FMC, you can do that. Okay, so right turn to the east, and I will press direct to controller exec. And then I guess we press nav, is that right? Yep. Okay, nav mode on. Or armed at least. Yeah, it's. You know, <laughs> the, I found out that the autopilot can be finicky at times, so. If but, you're not on an intercept for the uh, for the line, it just the nav won't, nav mode won't work. <laughs> okay, but it looks okay here. It says heading green, and it says the L nav one is armed. So I guess that's uh, what it should do. So whenever the nav can take over, the heading will automatically disengage. So yeah. yeah so that should be it'll... that should be soon now, right? Yeah, it should be soon. Uh, let's see. Also, let's go ahead and climb up to uh, 330. We're not on that good, side. Good call. So, you change the altitude like usual, and then what? How do you make it climb? Press uh, FL change, uh, FLC. FLC, which is like flight level change or open climb in Airbus speed. Yep. Does this, I see there's a VNAV button. Does that work? So it, it does. Oh, and also you see that the uh, heading just disengaged. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, so we've captured the LNAV. That's great. Yep. So you said the VNAV? Yeah, how does that work? So usually you don't use VNAV on uh, climbing the Challenger. That's what somebody, uh, somebody told me that, yeah, you don't use the VNAV only for descent. Okay. And most of the time, and half the time when I'm on that time, I don't even use the uh, VNAV because sometimes I'll get vectors or, uh, yeah, sometimes I'll get vectors or something like that across the waypoint at something. Okay. And then sometimes, I don't know if it's like a bug or something, but the VNAV is, it can get finicky at times. Like it, it won't meet uh, altitude restrictions. Okay. I just noticed we're not climbing yet, so should we... Uh... Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, press the FLC button. Okay, so I, I, sorry, that was my bad. I thought you'd press it. So FLC going in, it's going to climb us at 250 knots unless we tell it otherwise. Uh, It might go a little bit. Yeah, it's going to go up. Okay, until it catches up with itself, maybe. Yep. Okay. Okay, let's... See if there's. I don't think there's another checklist after this, other than cruise. Yeah. So yeah. after takeoff checklist, did we run this? Yep, we did. Okay. Or actually, no, we ran like half of it. All right. So let. Well, all right. Well, I'll I'll continue reading the second half then. So Pax transition. You said. Yep, we got that. All right. N one climb set. Uh, APU gen off. No, I'll go and turn that off. And APU shut down. It is down. <laughs> okay. Uh, passenger signs off or auto? They are on auto. Okay. And CAS clear. You're going to have to explain what's that CAS clear mean? CAS. What's... So, CAS, uh, so it's like, so you see, like, on your uh, MFD the like little blank area uh so on your mfd the second one there's a uh, like three uh, i wish i can have let me try to find the laser pointer because that that's a really nice thing okay what there's is... a laser pointer somebody had showed me i don't know if i can find it though I'm hearing some strange. The wind's sort of going. <laughs> Can you hear that? So, that must be multiplayer, right? The wind just went a bit funny. I really can't hear anything because the noise cancellation. 
All right, okay, all right, I took mine off. Yeah, the wind, it's fine now. There was just this wind, the wind sound was going just for a little bit. I've never heard it before, so I assume it must somehow be the multiplayer thing. Anyway, while you're looking for the pointer, do we stay at 250 knots even once we're through 10,000 feet? Uh, no, we don't actually. Uh, let's actually check the roof. Oh, I, I keep on forgetting I'm not on the left side. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we can actually speed up here if you want. Uh, no, it was just it was just a sort of question in general because usually you'd sort of speed up after ten thousand feet, wouldn't you? You'd go to most aircraft. And also, uh, we have to press the altimeter. So once we pass the transition altitude in the U.S. is eighteen thousand feet. So yeah, we'll go whenever, standard. Yeah, and we're actually already on standard anyway. So. Okay. Yeah. Same. Same difference. Two nine nine two. All right. So, well, I guess just because it feels more normal, we'll go for two eight zero knots. Uh, and major turbulence here actually yeah holy so we'll, I'll, I'll actually keep it a little lower then seeing as it is turbulent we'll keep it 260 yeah this is a uh, really thick suit okay and okay so yeah the next checklist is the descent checklist so once we get up to cruising altitude uh we're gonna try some stuff. Maybe like the dual input thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So after takeoff checks we've done. The next one is the immediate return checklist. I guess we skip that because we're not doing. Yeah. Okay, so just. I've actually had to do that before. <laughs> I had. I think I had like failures on and then I had like an engine failure. Had to make an immediate turn back to the airport. Yeah, that'll be cool. I I always like doing my failures and weird weird stuff like that. So they're okay, fun to we... do. Sorry. How... Let me do something really quickly so we can get out of this rough air. I'm gonna speed us up and hopefully. Hmm. Where's the, uh, I'm going to turn the weather radar on if I can. Or have you got it on your side, weather? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's going to be, it's, it's, should be like WX. Yeah. I always lose it. Yeah, TR slash WX. Yeah. I still don't see it on yours. I'll see if I can do it on mine. It's right here. There you go. Uh, I'm not sure it was. Ah, see what you're doing, yeah. Yeah, WX, try. Although it's definitely smoother now than it was. Oh, look at this, we've come out the top. Oh, yes. Oh man, I just need to screenshot that. That looks nice. Yeah, the outside view looks pretty good. Yeah, that's the view I've just got. Or did I just send you that? I don't know. Okay, oh, actually, let's go ahead and turn off landing lights. We forgot to do that. Uh, just turn them off. Uh, turn those off as well. I'm trying to get everything ready for... Yeah, I have to say that that some of the checklists just doesn't seem like for example we've been following the checklist and yet i didn't come across turn landing lights off yeah that, yeah I'm, I'm not sure there there are definitely some things that are missing from this aircraft uh well just the checklist at, at least anyway oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah the checklist sorry yeah the, the aircraft is fine <laughs> just there's some things missing from the checklist okay but okay nothing to uh Nothing too major. Yeah, nothing that would make you crash. Just weird little yeah. things. Like, I, I did think so, because I thought, yeah, we've been following that. You know, if there's one thing that we've done, it's the checklist, and it's... 
But at the same time, there were, uh, I think there was only like two devs working on this aircraft, so... Man, it, it's crazy what they did with this. Yeah, that's insane, man, because it is by far the most detailed. I mean, the fact that when you start, you don't even start in the plane, you start in the FBO. That's the only aircraft I have that, that, that that's happened with. Yeah, there's no other, like, no other plane in any flight simulation game that's as good as this one right here. But I think somebody, somebody told me that the main dev, he was like a software engineer or something. I, I forgot. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Somebody said he's really good at what he does, so. Yeah. And what I found as well is is that performance-wise, it's really quite good. I mean, I've currently got 58 frames, 60 frames a second. And yeah. there's two or three aircraft that I have where the frame rates are half that. And they're nowhere near as good as this plane. Yeah, I'm like at 70 right now. Yep, around 70 FPS. Like, it's really nice. Uh, on the ground, it can get a little bit choppy, around, like, 40. But, like, once you're in the air, which you are the majority of the time, it's really nice. Yeah, when you think how complicated it is. Because sometimes complicated aircraft equal low frame rate, and that is not the case with this one. Yeah. I mean, if you, like, look behind you, literally every single circuit circuit breaker works. And then I'm guessing he has to code all these... Oh, they actually things. work. They're not just a picture. Yeah, oh, yeah, you can working. pull them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I best not, but that is... I thought it was just, uh, you know, like a... Uh, you know, because most aircraft, they, they you can't press them, can you? Yeah, and, and one of the... Uh, one of the times I was flying this aircraft, I had a problem where the uh, lateral navigation was, like, messing up. And then I was just looking all over the internet, and then one of them suggested that sometimes one of the circuit breakers pop out and then they said it actually like like it just pops out randomly and you have to just pop it back in so when i pumped it back in it worked perfectly i'm like oh well, that's cool i mean I, I i have one of the air i think it's the tolis airbus and that's how they do it now so if they have a failure it it, it starts with the uh you know one of the one of the yeah, fuses and popping out yeah, I have the uh, I have the Tolis A320. I haven't I haven't flown it much. I'm actually quite tired of the A320s at this point. There's so many like for Microsoft and X Point. Do you know what? I was just thinking that same thing uh, yesterday. I thought, how many people is gonna make the the basically what is the same plane, right? The A320. Like, why is there so many versions of it? Yep, and like I remember, I bought the. Uh, I have the Phoenix A320 for Microsoft, and I I really don't even fly Microsoft really uh, anymore. Okay. Oh, we're at cruising. I didn't even notice. Yeah, we're up at cruise. Now there's that weird. Well, what? Uh, at some point, I'll edit this and put it on YouTube, and you'll hear there's that weird. Yeah, I, I can't. Oh, I'm not sure. I can't hear it. No, I don't think you'll be able to hear it from because I think you're the host. I think if I was hosting, it would sound normal to me, and you would hear it because I was reading the what you sent me about the multiplayer file, yep. and it was saying that the host would be the computer that does all the processing for the plane, the the flight dynamics, mm -hmm. and so it was saying that sometimes there would be a slight difference, say like when there's a bit of random weather. You might have a gust this way, mine's got a gust that way, but because you're the host, my plane will do what your computer says, no, this is what we're doing, and I think that's why I hear a slightly different thing. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Because oh, otherwise, yeah, so. the would, otherwise the gust would take me and my version of the plane, I don't know, half a foot to the left, and yours would be half a foot to the right, and then we'd be desynced, I guess. Yeah. The, uh, I actually, let me actually pull up something. Oh, oh yeah, so you're reading right from it. Yeah, I saw that. Where it says... Yeah. So I see, I, I just noticed we're about 100 miles away from destination. So I'm going to load that up because we probably have to think about coming down soon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I'm going to go AFK for about five minutes. I'm just about to go get some water. Okay. 
Right, so while Talis goes AFK, I'm gonna... What we got here? Kilo, Charlie, Lima, Tango. I'll tell you what, this... Dual cockpit thing... Oh, I've screwed that up somehow. Uh, Kilo, Charlie, Lima, Tango. This dual cockpit thing would be a really good way as well, aside from teaching somebody how to use the plane, it would be a really good way to teach somebody how to do that sim. Because, as you see, we're just talking normally, even though we're thousands of miles apart, and literally every button that he presses, or everything he does, sends across to me. The only exception is what we do on our tablets. So this, whatever goes on in here, is the only thing that is not shared. So, you know, the only thing you'd have to do is load up the chart yourself. There's still this weird, can you hear it? Weird effect. And I think, and I, you know, I was saying it before to Tally, I think that's where there's a slight changes in weather. You can see it here, you know, this sort of thing. We're, we're talking a knot or two of wind as it goes back and forth. And I think for that to sync up as quickly as you see, it's only for like a split second either way. I think that's where the... You hear that strange whistle as my plane basically zips back to where it should be. Okay, so KLT, arrival. And I've forgotten what we're talking about. So deport, arrive, we're on the Jonesy 4. Take a look at this. We're, okay, so there we go. We're coming in from the south, and you see there's a restriction here. We need to be below two six zero. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to get that dive going straight away. Flight level change. Two sixty. Down uh, above seventeen. So I'll, I'll reduce it to seventeen. Then we'll have to catch up the descent checklist there. Max speed 270. So I'm going to switch this over from Mac to indicated airspeed. And we're going to go for... That's this one. Oh, it already was. There we go. 270. Changes over automatically sometimes. Just keep an eye on that. So Jonesy, we've got that sorted. And then we're coming into... ILS 36. Okay, I'm back. All right, I've started our descent because we had a height restriction to comply with, which was probably going to miss, but better late than oh. never. Yeah, perfect. Oh, yeah, we are descending kind of late, but that's fine. We can probably, uh, yeah. We can actually try to do a hold. Wait, actually. Good idea. Because we're probably not going to get it down in time, most likely. Yeah, is there a, let's have a look. Is there a published one? There's a published hold at Jonesy, so we could use... We could do that left-hander at Jonesy for 10 mile to the left. Yep. Yeah, we can do that. You know how to do it. All right, well, I'll try. So I'm going to go legs page. Uh, I'm going to select Jonesy, do I? Uh, it's not going to let you. It's, so if you go to IDX and then hold. Ah, okay. IDX, hold... New hold? Yep. Jonesy, hold at left hander. Uh, so I guess le. There we go. Left hander, an inbound course is uh, 065. Yep. Oh, well, 066 will do, that's close enough. And leg distance is 10 nautical miles. And that's it, exec? Yep. Okay, there we go. So come over to the 
legs page. Seven miles away. That's nice. Tally's just dropped the speed back to 250. Yep. For the hold. I think it's 250 anyway, holding or not. Yeah. <laughs> the, um... I just want to slow this down because it's... Yeah, we need to slow it down a lot here. Get down a lot here. Okay. Well, you monitor the hold then. I'm going to see if we can get the ATIS. It's 1 to 115. So I'll, I'll use your side to do it. Uh, Got you. Tune. 1 to 115, COM 2. Turn COM 2 up. Charlotte Douglas International Information Yankee 2020 Zulu Special. Wind 0, 4, 0 degrees at 10 knots. Visibility 4 miles. Rain. Sky conditions broken at 650. Overcast at 7,300. Overcast at 29,000. Temperature 12. Dew point 11. Altimeter 3001. Arriving runways 36 right. 36 left. 36 center. Departing runways 36 right. 36 center. Advice on initial contact. You have information. Yankee. Okay. Turn it off. So, altimeter. I'll pre. I'll preset. That is three zero zero one. I love this that you can pre-dial this. This is like the Boeing. Three double o one. And then I think performance page. I recall there being something. Yep. So if you go to a uh, perf menu, and then approach. Approach. Great. This is it. So outside air temperature, we had 12 degrees. Winds were 040 at 10. And altimeters was 3001. That there looked good? Yep, that, that, that looks good. I and they were uh, gusting at 23 knots, so... Winds yeah. 10, gusting 23. Yep. Okay. I tell you what, these clouds look good at the minute. Oh yeah, they look magnificent, that's great. With the shadow like that. Ah. So what I'm gonna okay we're landing. Which runway was it again? Let me just call the legs. Three six right. Okay, so I'm gonna get the chart for three six right. Okay, I have it up as well. All right. So what I like to do if I'm flying offline is I like to. Set the altitude to where I need to be at to intercept the ILS. Sounds good. So, so it's 2,500. I'll put it at 2,500. Okay. So that that's the what you know what I would call the final fix, and that's what I would do as well. By the way, I just saw uh, uh, a lightning bolt out the left window. So we've got storms in this cloud. Uh, we're about to enter one right now, actually. Yeah, we're gonna turn into it. I think. Okay, so you're going to set the altitude down to 2,500. Got it. Yep. Um, altimeters, well, they change over at 18,000. Glide slope is 3 degrees. Minimums is 200 on the radio, so that's standard. Uh, ILS frequency, do you let that do it automatically then? Yep, I like to do it, uh, let it do it automatically. Um... You can, you can set it if you want. Usually, I let it do it automatically. If like if I'm on bad sim, because it, it can get a little crazy. Okay, well, we'll we'll try leave it automatic and see how that goes. And we're looking for the uh, identifier Indio Bravo Quebec Charlie. So we should see that showing up somewhere, at some point. Okay. 
And the radar vectors take us from... Uh, let's have a little look. Previous. From Chelly or Shelley to Heckham. Actually, uh, I forgot. I have to set the altimeter on my side. Well, they're not connected. So, on if you're playing by your no, sorry, not playing. If you're uh, flying by yourself, usually it'll sync and do both at the same time. But if you're in shared cockpit, you actually have to set it individually. And I think it's like that in real life. But yeah. whenever you're flying, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's separate in real life. This is cool, by the way. This three zero zero what? I know it's on the standby as well, so I'm going to set that there. I've just got an ice master caution. Okay. So now what we would do comes to the overhead and then the anti ice panel. Uh, I, I don't like that warning really. Okay. So let's just turn those on. So I'll just turn on the cow anti ice and then that should go away in a little bit. Okay, cool. So that's crazy because it's, it's really not that it shouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's saying it's 55 degrees in uh, Charlotte right now. We're, uh, we're kind of high off the ground. You're and talking Fahrenheit, that. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 13 Celsius. All right, let's... Uh, I'm changing we... over because we're below 18. Yep. So I have a question for you about the outset or Q&H, as you all see it. Uh, when... So, you know, the transition altitude in the U.S. is 18,000. Yeah. When do y'all... What is the Europe's transition? It like one... It's different It's different for every single airport, to, which is why I do actually prefer your system, because it makes a lot of sense just to have the same number everywhere. Yeah. I don't know, like, the U.S. is, like, its own, its own country, so it's, like, one thing, but I know Europe is, like, 30 different countries. I know they probably have very different rules. Well, yeah, but, but even, even within England, so... So the rule is basically, if if the airport's near sea level, you can have a really low transition. It might be as low as three thousand feet. But if you've got lots of mountain and stuff, then the level's going to be much higher. Five thousand, ten thousand, depends the mountains. So jet. Whoa, there was a really bright lightning flash then. I just love that. So generally, the the uh you know it's gonna the higher the terrain the higher your flight level but it does make sense just to have it at 18 and leave it there uh, it just seems simpler yep D yeah i i don't fly in europe often i try to fly sometimes offline but whoa yeah. the autopilot oh it's your aircraft oh I've got it. I've got it. I've disconnected autopilot. I'm going to follow the flight directors if you want to set it up again. Yep. Uh. Y'all dampers are off for some reason. Okay. Uh. Caution. Okay. I'm going to try to... Okay, it's back on. Autopilot's so can... on. Yep. I, I don't know why. Y'all dampers just disengaged for some reason. I wonder if it was... The, the storm somehow there was a it it all of a sudden threw the aircraft over it must have been to do with that yeah if the, dang, that's crazy I have you got the weather radar like... on because we need to be dodging some of this i i can't yeah. I could, it was too fiddly for me i need to press oh, Let's have a look. Okay, uh, lower menu lower menu I'm gonna do mine as well. P pause. I wonder why it's not W expose. this. That's weird, because I have the, uh, that's a radar. Okay, it's gotten a little bit stable. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not sure. 
My control here seems to be stuck on standby. I can't... Is it? I feel like that's a bug because uh, I've turned I've turned it on before. I'm wondering, is there another switch somewhere that we perhaps haven't pressed? I'm just going to get the lighting. Huh. Okay. Well, we're descending nicely. We're at 10,000 feet, so we could yep. probably... Should we go direct Shelly now? Oh yeah, go direct Shelly. Sorry, I forgot that we're still in the That's cool. We're trying to do 10 things at once here. Okay. So, yeah, we're not to go heading or not. It should. It should no, it was itself. doing it. It was doing it. All right. Ah, uh, reduce to two four zero. And Shelly's actually two ten, but we'll wait till we get there. So after Shelly, it's vectors to get to uh, Sid Do or Yep, Sick 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 Do Sick Do. What a name that is. <laughs> uh, yeah. The and then the uh, next one after that is Hey Hi Hey You. Hey you. Hey you. Yep. Yep. I, like I, I love some of the waypoint names in the US. I was trying to ask uh, Chat GPT, but it couldn't do it. But I said, Chat GPT, do you know what the RNAV fixes are? And it said yes. And it says, right, I want you to write a sentence using real world fixes, but that make a sentence. So it could stay, for instance, hey you, that would be a good first word. And then the second one would be, you know, I don't know. And I, and I was trying to get the G for it to, because you'd have thought it would be able to write a sentence using real world fixes, but it couldn't. It knew what I was asking it to do. It just couldn't write a sentence. Hey, I mean, in a couple of years, uh, AI has come a long way. It's, it's insane. If you really think about it. It is. I I make use of it every now and then for some of the stuff I do. It's it it has come a long way. Right, so here we are at Shelley. We should probably hold at seven thousand. Yeah, or we can. I'm gonna put us at six six. Well, you're gonna keep it going down. Okay. All right, down to six point six then. I've got this weird sound thing again. It must be that I, I know I keep saying it, but it's really weird hearing it for the first time. Yeah, that's weird. Uh, I don't think I. I think this because I. I don't. Whenever I do share copy, that I usually am not host, and it's my first time being host, so I don't know. Yeah, I think that's why. I think if you were not host, my computer would be working out where the plane is, and yours would be trying to catch up, and then you would hear that weird. Because I think that's what it is. Every time my computer's trying to catch up with yours, it might move the plane half a metre, and then next time, three metres. And as it's doing that, it's... You know, like when you go external view and you move the camera back and forward and you get that weird Doppler effect. That's what it is. Or you know what it might be because we're on, uh, on like, across the big ocean. <laughs> well, probably, yeah. That's how long it's taking us to to join up or whatever the word is anyway we're right on top of Shelley here so now yep. we would expect ATC basically to vector us to well I'll be ATC then so I'll say so I'll say uh, Challenger 650 left turn direct to Heckham descend to 2500 feet yep and then usually they they clear you for the uh visual approach a lot earlier than i think they should but it's they usually do that yeah uh, oh. but I... well that's a good point actually because it won't be visual today but let's just say you cleared for the ils 36 right there we go let's see i'm just gonna get the heading ready uh when we cross it's... shelly it... shelly it... shelly should be 210 not to correct or that's what it says all right so let's go 210 okay yeah good call 
or actually we didn't run the descent checklist because a lot was going on. Yeah, there was a lot. Okay, uh, if I can find it, all right, there we go. Shoulder harnesses, uh, I guess they're secure. Passenger signs are on auto. Pressur pressur pressurization is set. Fuel quantity, quantity and balance. Uh, ooh. Uh, that should be fun unless we get a warning. Flaps. Oh no, I'm, that's the wrong checklist. FMS landing data charts. It's it's gonna automatically do that. Also, what I'm gonna do in the FMC is I'm gonna put direct to Sid Sick Do. But we're still gonna let's actually go. Yep, yeah, heading. All right. And we can say present heading so I'm done with this checklist. And FMS, okay, approach briefing. VNAV, we don't, we're not messing with that today. I'm gonna get the All scent right. going. Okay, yep. Yeah. Ingo 250 or 2500. And perfect, we're on. 2.5, yeah, because it's getting on top of us a bit. Uh, we might need to descend. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the boards out because I think we're a little late. Yeah. And I'll reduce our speed to 210. Or it's 200, sorry. Okay. Tell you what, I'm just going to do a little less turn to the right to just give us an extra mile or two. Yeah, perfect. Yep. Great plan. Okay. Yep, and it's a little bumpy here. Yeah, could hear the thunderstorm, but hopefully we'll be okay. That would that would be embarrassing. That's happened to me once actually, but I did it done deliberately. I flew through a storm, and it uh, it shot me down. Uh, well, shot me down. That's the wrong way of saying it, <laughs> but I crashed. <laughs> So, do you want to land this one, or...? No, no, it's okay. You take it in, because cause that's new to me. Alright. So what I'll do is I'll I'll just keep going with the autopilot, and then whenever you're ready... Because I realise we're mixing roles here, but it doesn't matter. It's also new to me, is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're mixing roles a lot here. <laughs> but... Yeah. When I do shirt cockpit, I try not to be too serious because it is just for fun most of the time. So, yeah, and all of, yeah, and right now as well, all of this is a novelty. Uh, yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna stow the boards now. I think they've done as well, and I'm gonna turn back towards. Oh, yeah. And then I'm gonna start on the end range checklist. So if you wanna go ahead and start the APU on your APU on your side. Oh yeah, because of course you do APU for landing as well. Do I turn the power on or is that already on? Uh yep, you turn on the power fuel and the start. Okay, power fuel is on and start stop switch is on. So well I guess it's pressed. Uh so, yeah, it it takes a few seconds. There we go, yeah. start switch is illuminated. So you can leave that for now. Uh, I keep losing it. All right. So the altimeter is um three zero zero one. Yep. Three set. Truck cross check. Truck cross check. Avionics set. External lights. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on all the landing lights, recogs, anything that we need. Okay. With it. It's getting really, really. Okay, they're all on. Okay. I've got to drop the speed back because we're approaching fast. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, agree. Drop it 180. And usually they'll, uh, it still give us a waypoint to like they'll say maintain 180 to like hey you. That's usually like the uh, speed restriction. So we'll we'll uh maintain 180 to hey you, and then we'll reduce from there. Okay, I'm gonna say and runway condition hard, wet. that really quickly uh if you gen you can go ahead and turn that on uh, apu generator is on 
And we got ATS fail. So, uh, hold on. Wait, let me just fix that really quickly. There you go. Okay. Right, should we arm the approach? Because it's uh, blinking. Uh, yep, yep. Right. Uh, flaps one. Or not flaps yet. Flaps 20. Flaps 20, okay. okay. Yeah. I've got to drop the speed back to 160. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll let you do it from here. I'll just keep out the way because it's going to yeah. be real busy now. <clears throat> <clears throat> if you just say what you're doing and then and I'll just watch. I got you. Uh, if you can go ahead and uh, arm the thrust reversers. Okay. Left and right are armed. Alright. And I'm waiting for us to get the glide slope. There we go. We've got glide slope. Okay, perfect. If we have to go mist, it's eventually up to 4,000, so shall I wind the height up to there? Yep. I, I, I'm thinking we might have to go mist. It, like, I, I can't see anything outside. Hopefully it clears up at the bottom. Okay. Just give us a shout on speed if you want that changing. Yep. Uh, actually, you can go 150. 150. Just inside five miles. Alright. Um, I... Ooh, we're gonna keep this config. Let's see. Let's go ahead. I'll drop down the 30 flaps. Did you want the gear yet? Uh... 1,000. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get gear. Gear down. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the gear warning right there. Okay, I'm actually seeing something on the ground here. Perfect. I'm gonna drop it down to 128. I think that's our landing altitude. 128. Drop flaps full. Yep. Flaps full. I think with that we're good. Gear down, flaps full. Reverse is armed. Spoilers auto. 500. Okay. Uh. I see the ground, I see the approach lights. Still looking. I see it. Yep. Er, yep. And... 300. Go yep, I'm going to disco. Disconnect. Minimum. Continue. Ooh. I tell you what, you picked an airport here. 50, 40, oh. 30. Oh, I'm way early. It's fine. Ten. Nice. Versus. Uh, oh, there you go. We're versus arm. Oh, we are sliding. It's uh, very wet. There we go. Welcome to Charlotte. <laughs> Nicely done. That was very interesting. I I, I didn't see the ground to like the last second. I probably but... saw a little bit more on my version then. But that was cool. And that would have been a great time to use the hood actually on your son. Yeah, which is something that we've actually not looked at. I'll tell you what, that will be for another day on another video. Let's see you're on Delta. Oh, got some frame drops. For some reason, my... You're going to have to taxi. For some reason, my um, rudder pedal... Or, yeah, my rudder doesn't want to work. Do you, uh, can I just ask, do you, use, do you use rudder pedals for, for to steer it on the ground? Oh, uh, no, I use uh, my yoke. I have the uh, Thrustmaster TCA, T the side stick. I just use the... Okay, okay. Yeah. I'm actually getting some uh, soon.
The FBO is actually one more down, but this is fine. All right, sorry, I just heard you disappear. Oh, we were, oh do you want me? Sorry, you'll have no, to no, tell me good. where to go. This is fine, this is fine. All right, we'll grab it. I was yeah, just going to uh, pull up anywhere. Yeah, this is a uh, corporate hangar, so yeah, we can go here. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and run the after landing. Okay. Just going to disconnect that message. There we go. Sweet. Okay, so landing post off, three cogs off, anti, anti collisions oh, off. There we go. Tell you what, ignition. We forgot to turn that on. This heavy rain is a, is a hindrance. Yeah. The, oh, what was that? Oh. I mean, when you're moving fast, it doesn't matter. It blows out the way, but when you're going slow. Tell you what, we'll just uh, we'll pop, we'll pop it here. Oh. Zero to six, you guys all on standby. Parking okay. brake set. All right, perfect. We'll go ahead and enter shot not to checklist. Taxi lights are off. Parking brake set. Reverse thrust stowed. Gen 1 and Gen 2. Wanna go ahead and turn those off? Uh, Gen 1 and 2, yeah. Uh, off. Alright. And we can go ahead and go with engine to shut down. Alright, engine 2, shut down. Also. What I'm going to do is call Jenny to get the passengers. You want me to do it? Oh, I just called him. Oh, you called him. Okay. Yep. Should we carry on with engine one? Yep. Okay. Uh... I'll go ahead and turn off the fuel boost pumps. Let's see. Beacon. We'll go ahead and turn that off. No stair. Beacons off. Passenger signs off. Okay. The next thing is let's go ahead and let off our passengers. The next checklist is the securing checklist. So that means basically just turning off everything, uh... Okay. You're yep. opening the door. Yep, opening the door for, uh, so Jenny can get somebody to get the passengers. Shall I ask, uh, ground crew for chocks? Oh, yeah, yeah, perfect, yep. Okay, chocks in. He's given us the thumbs up, that's done. Perfect. <clears throat> so now what we do usually, we can start on the securing checklist, but once it, uh, we have to wait for um, Jenny to come get the passengers. Okay. So I'll go ahead and start the emergency exit lights or, or emergency lights are off. ACDC. Utility is off. Headset off. <laughs> See, thrust reversers are off. Chucks are in. Parking brake. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Hydraulic pumps. Uh, I'll turn everything off but 3A because we need to open okay. that. The airport taxis here. Oh yeah, for sure. Captain. Great flight as always. Well, <laughs> I'll see you next time. I will right. see you next time. Great flight. Right. <laughs> so if you want to go ahead and go outside and install the covers and all the pins and it, stuff. It would be sending me out in the rain, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> right, covers. Yeah, here we go. These are proper blowing around in the wind. So there are four on this side. We've got the pin on the right wheel. We've got the left-hand side, one, two, 
Um, I can't actually put a cover on that thing on directly by your... Oh, that must not have a cover. The, the, the tube or whatever it is... Oh, it's in a, yeah, it's in a cover there's, already. There's three on my side. Okay, uh, there's three. Instead of four, yeah. Because the thing right next to your window looks like it should have one on, but it, uh, but it doesn't. Okay, yeah. so the wheel... Uh, the back is covered, so now I'm going to do the nose wheel. So, that, again, this is cool. I think it's a nice... So you press these. This is like the first video that I watched. The first tutorial was how to do this. Switch drops down. Do you hear a uh, nose warning when I do that? Uh, not yet. Okay. So I'm inside. Yep, I just got one. Okay, cool. <laughs> So one, two, and three. There we go. So I've put the pin on the nose gear and the door. I'm about to turn off the APU and battery master in here. So let's see. I'm missing anything. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the VA. Okay. Uh, those are off. We're gonna turn that off. I'll tell you what, I'll close I'll close the door just so that oh, yeah. people can see. So again, the cool thing actually I don't think I've closed the door before from the outside, but there you go, you sort of hold it. Yep. Push, then I guess we close the lever. And then lock it. So we'll start pushing. Yep. yep, there we go, cool. Then we have to go for the owner. Oh wow, the thunder. Look at the raindrops on the window. Is that it now? Yep, that's it. That's it. And then, yeah. and then like, I, I just love this plane. Like, you lock up the plane and then you go to the F FBO. Oh, I didn't realize you came to the FBO afterwards as well. Yep. Fans? And then if you actually, if you walk back to the door over there, it'll take you back to the start menu where you can exit out, explain like you're like exiting the FBO. Wow. So, then you can... oh, yeah. so is is that it? Is that so that we're we're done now, Tally? Yeah, we're done. And if you wanted to do like a turnaround or anything like that, you come back in here, get your uh, ground handling request from Jenny, and fill out another one, fill out another flight plan, and you're ready to go. That's Other so... than that, that's so yep. cool. That's so cool. Right, well, Tally, yep. I. I can't thank you enough for giving up your free time to do that with us. And it would be great if we can do it again sometime. Maybe even yeah. on VATSIM. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I love this plane. I love going on VATSIM as well. I just saw you turn that. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, if you press that right there. <laughs> small things to please small minds. After that, I said my goodbyes and thank yous with Tally and the video recording came to an end. But I just want to add some thoughts here after the fact. So this is my experience in the video that you just saw being multi-crew. And I'm going to say first off, the impl implementation overall is second to none. The only time I've seen anything come close to this in multi-crew is my experience with certain modules in DCS. Usually, and I say usually, my multi-crew experience has been so limited in any other sim because it's usually so buggy that it's unusable. This is, as far as I'm aware, the bugs were almost non-existent. The only very minor things seemed to be when those wind gusts were going backwards and forwards, you had the associated sound changing a little bit while the aircraft was trying to the way the way i guessed it was his aircraft who was hosting the session took a gust let's say 12 knots my aircraft took a gust let's say at 10 knots just because of the randomization of the wind and then clearly there's a two knot discrepancy 
And then, I don't know, every second or two times a second or whatever it is, my aircraft is trying to catch up with his aircraft so that we remain in sync. And that little catch up causes the sound. This is just my, you know, layman's semi-educated guess as to how that might be. Um, other issues. Uh, so this one for me is huge. And again, this is something that you sort of pick up on while you're doing it. And that is because, yes, if you are physically looking at a switch, let's use the landing light switch. And I'm just going to refer to Tally here as my partner, um, for you know, just so that we know what we're on about. If my partner presses a button, say landing light switch, and he flicks the switch. If I'm actively looking at that landing light switch, I will see it move. That is obviously, that obviously works and all of that's great. But if I am sat, let's say in the pilot seat and I'm looking straight ahead and in the corner of my view, I cannot see the landing light switch. If now my partner presses the switch, clearly I don't see the switch move. But in real life, peripheral vision, I would see an arm in the corner of my view go up there and do something fiddling in vaguely that place where the switch is. Now, even if I had VR, I would not see that. Well, I say I wouldn't. I, I don't know because I didn't try. But as you see there, the Minecraft dude, once we were inside, was limited to head and shoulders. And so by not seeing that arm, that means, again, unless I'm actively looking at the switch he's pressing, I've got no idea. He's pressed it. And you may say, well, yeah, big deal. That's obvious. But the way I fly in single player, and I'm sure this will be the same for most people who've flown airliners single player, you have this and I don't know how to describe it other than like a mental mind's eye image of every single thing that you've done with that plane. So if you've turned the battery on, you know the battery is on. And that's probably a more obvious one because things start lighting up. But let's say you've turned the APU bleed on. OK. Now, your partner turns the APU bleed off, but without saying so. In your mind's eye, you still think the APU bleed is going unless they've told you otherwise. Now, add that on with every other possible switch that there is in the aircraft, and you can soon see that the way you think the plane is set up is going to completely differ from the way the plane really is set up if your partner starts pressing things without saying. And what you hear, and again, this is probably just because Tally's the more experienced with this aircraft, and so he's probably thinking, look, just to save some time, I'm just going to run through these checklists and I'm not really going to tell, uh, you know, in, in, in his view, my student or me, I'm not going to tell him every single thing I'm doing. And so at parts you sort of hear Tally mumbling a little bit as he's sort of going through the checklist, been under his breath and just getting things sorted. Now, that's great, especially if I'm just sort of there to see out the window what's going on. But of course, I'm there flying it as well. And so as your partner is going through the checklist, but in a, let's just say, oh, I'll just do this bit to myself and then I'll do the next bit out loud again. You sort of, in your own mind's eye, get lost with what state the aircraft's in. And so what I would say, and again, this is made worse because you don't have that peripheral vision to see what buttons or if indeed any buttons are being pressed. And so that right there is huge. So. I already know the second time I'm going to fly this, whether it's with Tally or with anybody else, I would probably say right at the front, it's important we communicate what changes we make with the aircraft. So if we're just chatting, that's obviously fine because we're, be we're, be we're between doing, you know, some kind of a, of a checklist to get ready or whatever. And so I'd say there comes a time then when it's like, right, we've got to stop the chit chat. Let's go with a checklist. And I think even though it may seem a bit over the top because it's a sim, just because of where the aircraft is in your mind's eye, especially if you're trying to do it uh, for that sim, it's like, right, let's do this checklist. And then I think just like real life, you've got to have the pilot flying and pilot monitoring. Now, it's not that you can't switch those roles in the same flight. Uh, and I would say, yeah, for sure. But I think that pilot monitoring and pilot flying roles need to be, um, I would say, adhered to in the sim 
for the simple reason then that one person could do checklist and the other one can actually then flick the switches. And I would go so far to say that the only time buttons get pressed is during the checklist flow. So you don't think, oh, I'm just going to set this and set that and set the other. I would say, no, you don't change anything unless you do it either in the checklist or you explicitly state to the other guy, oh, I'm just going to change this. I'm just setting the speed to this. I'm just changing the height to that. And again, that's because it's not always obvious somebody's changing a thing. Um, so there's definitely that. Other things uh, to note, clearly, if you're doing it for the first time, that like I was today, there's going to be that wow factor and what happens if I do this? And you're trying to figure out just how well it works. But after you've done it for that first time, I would make use of that sterile cockpit rule. And again, it doesn't need to be ironclad, but I would try and sort of stick to it to some extent because you're going to be so busy during those critical stages of flight, especially because you need to be communicating way more than in real life. Again, due to that lack of peripheral vision, plus as well, the lack of a standard operating procedure. You know, in real life, British Airways are going to have a whole set of procedures and that's the way that they do it. Ryanair are going to have a different set of procedures and that's the way that they do it. And so... You know, if, if if you're with British Airways and you've been there for 10 years and, and you're working with somebody who's been there for 20 years and you're flying the same plane, it's like you already know what the other guy is going to be doing without them necessarily having to say it because that's just the way the airline operates. Not working for an airline and, and or being, you know, working for airlines thousands of miles apart, this is not going to happen. Clearly, I do not work for an airline, uh, t nor does Tally. Uh, at least not yet. And so when it comes to doing things, we have zero expectation of what the other guy is or is not going to be doing. So to have that communication, I think, is super important. And I guess, yeah, having those predefined roles. And so I think when it gets really busy, um, it, it's obviously massively helpful. Like that one time we experienced the autopilot cutting out due to that storm. Um, so for me to be able to say, you know, I'm going to fly the plane and you do the rest of it and see if you can get it hooked back up, you know, to be able to do that was a huge plus and, and obviously to communicate that as well, which, you know, which I did in that moment was a, was a great example of how teamwork in the cockpit can work in the sim. And last but not least, I would just say that the initial connection between the two aircraft was uh, in the way that it was presented out of the box was not happening. Tally, thankfully, had a bit of experience with this before, and he said to make use of this free piece of software, at least it was free in the capacity that we were using, uh, called Hamachi. So I installed that. I didn't even have to exit X-Plane, which is a fantastic thing, because it uh, with the auto author and all of that, I didn't want to reload it all. I installed Hamachi, it literally took 30 seconds to do. I pressed run, tabbed back into X-Plane, and bingo, it worked as easy as that. And I think basically what this Hamachi thing does is it tricks my computer in and uh, Tally's computer into thinking that we're working on the same network, literally as if we were in the same house. And for whatever reason, uh, X-Plane or the uh, Hot Start Challenger 650 much preferred that, thinking we were in the same house, and it made the whole connection process work uh, almost flawlessly. You did hear once or twice there were some voice communication issues between myself and Tally. I'm not sure why that is. It probably has more to do with distance than anything else because, well, at least for me, I've got a 1,000 megabit fiber connection and I'm wired into the uh, fiber router because, of course, Wi-Fi signal can be a little temperamental at times. And I think with that, my thoughts and feelings with regards to the whole thing are over and I look forward to doing another flight again and maybe even uh, next time we team up, we'll go on that sim. Uh, but yeah, the Challenger 650, it is, in my opinion, the most deeply simulated study level aircraft that there is for a simulator right now. 
Um, there are some aircraft that go a long way. The uh, Phoenix A320 in Flight Sim 2020, the PMDG in Flight Sim 2020 are very heavily simulated. Um, there are several other in X-Plane that would sort of equate to that. You know, the Zebo 737, for example, the Tolis, a series of Airbuses, uh, Flight Factor 75 and 767. In DCS, you've obviously got the A-10 Charlie versions 1 and 2. The version 2 would be the uh, more uh, or the more deeply simulated one. The F-16 and the F-18 are arguably pretty much simulated in DCS. But again, I still feel that the Challenger 650 is above that. So if you take all of those aircraft I just mentioned as pretty much the top tier for all of the three sims flights in 2020 x-plane uh, 12 and dcs the challenger 650 for x-plane 12 is then again on another rung on another level above all of those and it's got a price point to reflect it but overall yeah brilliant and until next time take care bye bye